what's going on y'all part three um before I go into part three man leave y'all comments questions concerns um I'm gonna update this as much as I can man as the Lord shared different things with me I wanna um be able to share it with y'all man and uh, spread the word the internet is awesome because now we can uh spread the word man World Wide Web, you know, www World Wide Web. We can spread the word over the internet, you know. So uh, I'm gonna have this on YouTube and MySpace. So uh, check it out, man. All right, back to what we was talking about. Where we left off. Uh, Christ came to the world because there was room for forgiveness. He didn't have to. He didn't. He didn't deserve to be punished like he was punished. He took on our iniquities. He took on our our uh, our punishment that we were supposed to take on our behalf. So uh, we see that there is room for forgiveness from the question. There's a difference, you know, from being saved and being those who fake in front like they're Christians. There's a big difference. We have eternal life, as I said on uh, part two. We have eternal life. And the Bible says that eternal life is, uh, the Bible says eternal life is, is that, uh, that we may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he have sent. See, those who have eternal life, those who are saved, those who have salvation, will know God and will know who Jesus Christ is. Those who fake in front don't know. But there's still room for forgiveness for those who don't know and those who fake. I'm telling you, it's not nothing that we should fake about. It's something that we should give joy about. We shouldn't be ashamed. You know, I, I bump my, my Christian music. I listen to Christian hip-hop, as y'all can tell on my MySpace page if y'all go to it. I bump my Christian hip-hop, you know, and I play it at work, and I ain't ashamed of it, man. The only thing I, I can I can say, and I can be truthful about it, you know, even when I used to listen to secular hip-hop, I used to get, uh, I used to feel kind of weird because I don't want to offend nobody, man. You know, whether I'm listening to Christian music or back in the day when I listened to secular music, I never wanted to offend anybody. But guess what, y'all? The gospel is offensive to those who don't believe. God is offensive to those who don't want to receive him. People get mad and they say, oh, are you telling me how to live my life? Nah, I ain't telling you how to live your life. I don't want to tell nobody how to live their life. But it's the word of God, man. God is telling you in his word how to live, how to live your life. So I urge everybody, man. To seek God, not through the lenses of grandmother's eyes, not through the lenses of your mother's eyes, not through the lenses of my eyes. But when you have time, open up your word and read it so you can see the, the true and living God through the lenses of his eyes and his holy scripture. The false one, the one that, that acts like he's a Christian man or she, they, they, they try to fit in, man. But the thing I, I'm telling you. If you're saved, you're in, man. You don't have to act. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to to, to front like you're you're not when you are. So let's let's thank God for His goodness and His mercy to us, because He could have wiped us off the face of the earth. He didn't have to send Christ. Christ didn't have to come. He didn't have to, but He did on our behalf. We now have a legal stand before God. Remember when I said that uh, Adam's sin was imputed unto us in, in part one? When, when Adam committed that one sin, the bite of the fruit, that sin right there was imputed to everyone who ever was to live and breathe a breath. But now with Christ, his righteousness is imputed unto us. So for those who receive Christ, for those who come to the Lord, his righteousness is imputed unto us. And now we can stand boldly before God with our heads hung high, not hung low, with our heads up high and our hands up high, praising him and thanking him for coming and saving our souls. Y'all, I'm telling you, because of Christ's death, we have a legal stand before God. Christ is pleading on our behalf daily when we commit a sin. That sin isn't even looked upon, y'all, because we're covered with the blood of Jesus. We're covered with that righteousness. I wish I could have like a lens to see the blood just dripping off of me because it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful feeling when you're saved. You don't have to worry about where I'm going to go when I, when I die. You don't have to guess and you don't have to pretend and you don't have to act like you know. But you know 
that when you die, you're going to be with the Father. You're going to be with the Father. You're going to be with the Son. And you're going to be with the Holy Spirit. You're going to be together in union and joy and peace. I got a final thought. And uh, this is the last. This is the last uh, part to this to this three part series, I guess. And the question is: There room for forgiveness? I want to share y'all a personal story. Before I was saved, I used to date a girl, and uh, she used to always want me to go to church. And I was like, Nah, I'm good. I don't want to go. I'm not the church going type, because you know I wasn't raised in the church. So one day she asked me the question. She said, If you were, if if, if Christ was to come right now, what would you do? And this, I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all this story because I want y'all to see who I really was back then, man, and who we are apart from Christ. We're nothing but filth. But I said, she said, what would you do if Christ came right now? I said, I would pick up a rock and I would throw it at him. That right there is, man, I said, I would pick up a rock and throw it at our God, yo. That's sad, man. And if Christ would have came that day, that moment, and decided to wipe me off the earth I would have deserved it because of that sin that was in me so when I ask the question is there room for forgiveness obviously there is because that person back then isn't this person now Christ totally changed my life around and I have some faults there's people out there that have sins and we ought not to look down but we ought to have that same room of forgiveness that God has for us and forgive the Lord and, for, and, and forgive those people when, when they do wrong not looking bad on them but just praying for them that the Lord will change their life like he's changed ours so to answer the question is there room for forgiveness obviously there is before I close out I got about three minutes I want to read y'all a verse that means a lot to me and it, it just shows me God's grace it's coming from John the gospel of John chapter 8 verses 1 through 11 and it reads but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early, now early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said to her, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something in, of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his fingers, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw, the, throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted, in, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last and Jesus was left and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman he said to her woman where are those accusers of yours has no one condemned you she said no Lord, no one lord and Jesus said to her neither do I condemn you go and sin no more that verse right there shows me the grace of God shows me that there is room for forgiveness if you don't know Christ and you think your sin is too much you think your sin is too much to be forgiven I just want to let you know that you're wrong man God is extending the arm he's extending both of his arms he's extending his heart to you he's extending it to the point where you have people like me and like others who God have changed to reach out to the world man to uh give you the invitation of Christ just bow your heads and pray with me one second and I'll be out on y'all guys I love y'all Heavenly Father I just want to thank you for the time that you allow me to come and uh, bring your word I pray that you allow this to continue as long as you allow it to Lord I thank you and I pray in your holy name Jesus Amen Amen leave y'all comments let me know what y'all think if y'all want more if not like I said I'm going to do it anyway I love y'all man y'all stay blessed is there room for forgiveness yes and, and I just pray that the, the, the love of God reign in each and every one of y'all so that y'all can show forgiveness to those who may have done y'all wrong just as Christ showed y'all forgiveness. Y'all take care, man. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Love y'all. Holla.